Good afternoon. We are still here with Professor Martino and Montani and two technical managers of Zeiss and Hoya, Silvano Dark and Mr. Briganti. We have a very interesting topic to discuss. We are talking about UV and uh, what happens uh, in the so-called digital surround. It's not that easy to talk about blue light. You have the risk of being banal. That's why we need to be very clear, very much to the point. And we will try to do that with the two colleagues who will be talking about physics and how blue light can actually be managed for industrial applications. Let me just start off. Let me just put into the shoes of the moderator. We are talking about the so-called lead generation, what has influenced and forged the so-called digital world. We have uh, in medicine internet addiction disorder. Sometimes we banalize uh, developments in the world of ophthalmology, but if we want to look at psychology, we have a new addiction phenomena. So this is now well acknowledged. Uh, we have a proper internet addiction disorder. Why is it an addiction, first of all? So nomophobia, when you are afraid of not getting mobile access and uh, um, being disconnected, think of what happens to you and how you feel like uh, when you have forgotten your mobile phone at home. That's really nomophobia, which is not a proper disorder. It's a, a state of restlessness, of fear, uh, and there are some complex Applications that might appear in the way you interact with other people. So internet sometimes can act as a drug. It enhances release of dopamine, which is a physical phenomenon impacting on our nerve system. Quite often, when we are a bit out of control, when we have some problems, this is due to improper use of our mobile phones or laptops. So. Here you see Tim Cook in Florence last year. He has said, uh, you know, uh, Americans like to convey their philosophy in few words, but technology in itself is neither good nor bad. Uh, it's neutral, so it's only going to uh, uh, get what you decide the technology to be good or bad at. It's really up to you how you use uh, the technologies that are available to you. You can uh, use uh, displays um, that minimize exposure to blue light. Uh, technology will go on evolving and progressing, but it won't uh, be in itself a solution. I like to try and understand whether there are any lessons we can draw from the past. 
Americans are optimistic. They say that on an average we use our smart phones, our mobile phones, for consecutive hours every day, which means that in a year we use our smartphones for two months. Today, February the 25th, imagine we close the room and open it two months later. You have just been playing and watching your mobile phone, so that's really unbearable. When driving, quite often I start wondering and posing myself questions. So, uh, so when we drive our car for 50,000 kilometers per year, the car will give me an average speed, so maybe 40 kilometers per hour on an average, which means that I have been driving for three months in a year. So we are not just smartphone addicted when we drive. We are not allowed to use our mobile phones or to look at them. So, if we add the two things, uh, we really realize that there, we have to find some solutions. So, my advice uh, to you uh, is culture, consultancy and confidence, establishing a trust relationship, culture. We have heard that only 7% of uh, uh, people, of the people we meet have got a culture and awareness of sun-induced damage. If we started to explain how these tools should be used, uh, so what should be the distance between the TV monitor and us when watching TV and how large our monitors should be, so whether we consider LED or plasma monitors, not all at once, uh, to make sure we don't harm our eyes, or the 2020 rule uh, when we talk about uh, computers, so 20, uh, 20 minutes of work and then a break. And then for smartphones, we have the night shift option, which is really useful. So I think we really need to pass this advice. These are very simple educational rules, like the old citizens' education, which was taught at school. If we do consultancy, if we perform, if we collect the patient's history, think of the behavior of your patients, of your customers. Uh, halter devices uh, to measure the heart rate and how it evolves uh, during the day. If you do dream, uh, if you go to the supermarket, uh, uh, halter control enables us to see how our heart works. If you do the same, you will see that we have been using four hours of mobile phones, uh, six hours uh, of laptop, and on the top of that we have been watching TV, so this generation, the lead generation, has got a huge potential, but uh, these people are exposed to the devices uh, very, very frequently, so we are probably now exceeding uh, the threshold and we need to work on consultancy and on trust, on confidence. Uh, this is Richard Thaler, Nobel Prize winner for economy with the concept of behavioral economics. He was among the very first authors to introduce psychology into the domain of economics. Whenever we buy something, we are driven by psychological variables. So this is not a 
revolution in terms of uh, thinking, but there's a nice um, book, the Nudge, you know, the mother elephant kicking the little the baby elephant to explain where he or she should go. So that's the idea. Uh, we should uh, encourage and prompt the citizens to do something which is good for them, even if it does not necessarily come to our mind first like uh, paying, uh, for instance, uh, the TV annual subscription fee. It's, it has now been embedded into the electricity bill and thus they have fixed many of the problems. Uh, professionals need to work on that. Uh, so also when it comes to UV and blue light, uh, so as to prompt uh, customers to do more, also in the field of prevention. Blue chip. What does it mean for opticians? Uh, by blue chip, I mean everything which has got to do with such a picture. Here you see back uh, to printed newspapers uh, with grandparents uh, using laptops. Uh, rather than a physical relationship, we have a Skype relationships uh, where grandparents are sometimes are encouraged to learn and use uh, Skype because they want to interact uh, with their grandchildren uh, on a student exchange. Uh, here you see uh, ophthalmological lenses uh, which have an impact on geometries, materials, treatments, uh, uh, kind of touch, uh, so just like the little kick to the baby elephant, uh, so that your customers uh, take a step further, just like a seller telling you you have to buy a mobile phone with a larger memory because uh, uh, it will offer more. It's slightly more expensive, but you will have an extra benefit. So let me just hand over to the other two speakers who will now explore this concept of lead generation. Ah, Beh, non potevo farmi l'applauso da solo. Questa... Allora, dovete sapere che... You should know that Professor Martino had me buy a new TV set. Una presentazione. I uh, saw his presentation in Monopoly on screens. And so I went to him and I asked him uh, I should change my TV set. And uh, so he uh, suggested OLED and uh, he saved my life. I uh, spent a bit more money, however. Uh, good afternoon again. It's always me. It's always Maurizio Martino. Can you hear me? Yes. First and foremost, you may have wondered where this blue light comes from because uh, we speak so much about it. Which are the sources of blue light uh, permeating our life? Furthermore, Giancarlo Montani, some months ago, asked me, why don't you deliver a speech, a talk on display units? And speaking with other people, I realized that there's a lot of confusion in the field. Let's uh, uh, try and shed light uh, on this theme and give an answer to the first and second question. First of all, what's a display? Uh, the answer is not so straightforward. If you, if you look around, you have so many display units, your smartphones, uh, the various devices you have. And... Uh, let alone uh, TV sets, the various panels. Uh, and uh, we are quite uh, surrounded by display units, displays. 
we might uh, define them as a transducer to convert uh, digital analog information in such a way they can be processed by the human brain in electro-optical effect. You can read all the definitions. A display should give you information. That's the basic point. And uh, you have various uh, technologies at the basis of a display. And uh, they are listed here. It's in English. I've taken it from an English website. Here have the various types from uh, uh, cathode ray tubes uh, to LED and now new systems. The three types uh, that uh, we shall examine uh, here at the basis of all the displays we have today are reflective displays, transmissive displays and emissive displays. What does it mean? It means that in one case uh, we see the variation in the reflection between two structures and in another case instead uh, we have light that is transmitted uh, through a screen. It's LED, LCD, and then OLED, the latest generation emitting light. So we see that uh, there's a difference uh, in terms of reflection, transmission, and uh, uh, emission. So the first uh, few displays uh, we consider are reflective displays. Uh, the famous uh, uh, Kindle uh, e-reader, ink on paper, ink paper. Uh, they are part and parcel of our daily life, uh, but uh, their ways uh, of operating are different. Uh, they reflect, uh, they have a screen uh, and uh, liquid crystals. In the first uh, few cases, uh, uh, the presence of uh, liquid crystal is important. Uh, it's a system. Uh, It's a system that uh, can have uh, a behavior of one kind or another. It can be transparent or dark. Uh, such reflective devices uh, are so-called bistable devices. What do I mean? In order for them to change their state, I should provide uh, tension. So your e-reader a battery may last uh, weeks, months, they do need continuous supply of energy. Let's now get to the queen, in a way, to the prince of displays, LED, what is usually defined as LED, but the layer that gives you information uh, uh, is made up of liquid crystals, and uh, they are backlit, in a way. And here you see the structures of a typical LCD display. Most of your smartphones, most of your, for example, computer screens. The principle of operation, I will be as brief as possible, stems from polarization. Polarization of light through such displays very often. I don't know if you ever happened uh, to stop at a gasoline station and uh, a liquid crystal uh, bending system uh, having polarized uh, sunglasses. You don't see numbers. Uh, when numbers uh, change, uh, you should take off your glasses because all of such uh, devices emit polarized light. If you have polarized uh, glasses, if the axis of transmission is at 90 degrees, you see nothing. You have to bend your head or you have to take off your glasses. So the principle of operation comes uh, uh, from the induced operation of such uh, liquid crystals, but they do not emit light. They need to be backlit. That is to say, uh, so far, I have talked about uh, single color displays and obviously you should imagine you have three different colors uh, and uh, whose intensity, mutual intensity, gives you the color you're interested in. You know that each individual color 
may be made up of this combination of three uh, colors and it gives you the hue of color you may want. Here uh, we get into the blue light uh, LED used to backlit every device that we use is white LED. But LED um, meets uh, in a, a band of wavelengths uh, which is quite well defined. Uh, they emit uh, a single color, more or less, uh, for the individual color. What makes them blue or white? Uh, the fact that uh, blue LEDs uh, are used uh, and uh, they hit uh, certain elements uh, that emit uh, red orange uh, uh, light. Uh, it is seen by the eye as white light. It's uh, uh, the backlighting uh, in all the screens that you have in your pockets. Uh, 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 for example, uh, the screen of a computer. Let's now speak about another problem, uh, pixels. Uh, you know that uh, the pixel is uh, the unit of vision of a display. And uh, also in this case, you have various ways uh, or various possibilities. I made the example of a gasoline station uh, and there you have segments uh, that change. Uh, you don't have a big request uh, for a number of pixels uh, to be included, but if you have an iPad or such a device, uh, you need uh, a huge density of pixels uh, to have uh, a high resolution. Here I show you some examples. Uh, the Retina display of uh, iPhones, uh, 326 uh, pixels, uh, uh, and at a distance of 30 centimeters, uh, you have 100 pixels uh, per meter. The iPad has uh, 264. If you then go to, for example, uh, and analyze uh, uh, advertising big board, uh, the dimension of a pixel is uh, 2.5 uh, uh, meters. Uh, this is what I told you. Uh, uh, you see uh, uh, lead in various colors and lead in white. This is the typical scheme of a white lead. And uh, as uh, you use uh, blue emitting lead, and such leads are made up of uh, uh, nitrogen-based uh, uh, material, and uh, you have uh, a yellow, orange uh, uh, light and blue light, the combination gives uh, uh, white light. Part uh, of that blue light uh, that was uh, necessary to photo excite uh, phosphorus, uh, you keep it. You don't eliminate it. Uh, when you have a spectrum of emission of any type of display, you see that uh, the peak of blue is quite obvious, much more so than a typical sun emission. Uh, and. Uh, where the human eye uh, got accustomed in uh, hundreds of millions of years. That's the problem. We have this emission of blue that uh, comes uh, from backlighting of white lead that some way or other we cannot eliminate and hence the problems with blue light. I'd like to launch a message at this point. As uh, uh, you have uh, fake news, as you have fake news, uh, for example, that blue light uh, uh, damages the retina, it's not true. Yes, you may have problems. Uh, uh, this is a scientific issue. A uh, change in the circadian rhythm, and uh, uh, this will be said by Giancarlo or by any physician. However, Uh, you should uh, pay attention to what is debated uh, online, present and future, and I conclude the present is represented by LCD LEDs, but at the same time, on the market, we have uh, the OLED system. OLEDs uh, are uh, polymer and uh, 
uh, they emit light. And uh, the emission of the wavelength is controlled by us. So, uh, we have, uh, 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 in this way, uh, contrast. Uh, dark black color is quite high. Uh, obviously, as Nicola has learned, the cost is still high because of technological reasons uh, and commercial reasons, uh, and uh, they should get rid uh, of LCD systems, and then uh, they can uh, sell OLED. And uh, as it's a uh, polymeric material, OLEDs uh, can be used on curved screens, uh, also in the case of curved screens. Now, prices have decreased a bit. Uh, in the future, what does the future hold in store for us? Already, at the moment, we have uh, systems connected uh, to eyeglasses uh, and uh, uh, this type of interest, for example, in the case of Google Glasses, uh, is dwindling and perhaps uh, you have problems uh, yet unsolved. And, uh, nanotubes uh, based on carbon, uh, uh, this is the future. But uh, the idea or the concept uh, underlying is always the same, uh, to try and increase uh, resolution of various pixels because uh, uh, depending on what you want, a smartphone, a display of a computer, uh, obviously you want high resolution. And one last element. During the first debate, uh, uh, I went to see which smartphones uh, use uh, OLED systems, uh, and uh, it's uh, high-end uh, smartphones, uh, X uh, iPhone, uh, Samsung, la last generation, and uh, uh, most uh, smartphones uh, we have uh, uh, are LED, LCD LED systems. Uh, this is to reiterate the concept uh, uh, about what we use, as Nicola said, uh, uh, what we use uh, and uh, what we should expect. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Professor Martino. I have bought an OLED L display, an OLED device, uh, the seller uh, knew everything about the technical features, but uh, he would not uh, inform me that uh, OLED uh, uh, also uh, provided a more eye comfort. So this might really be topic for discussion in the future. Sometimes uh, sellers are not capable of conveying the message uh, that you have retina OLED displays and this can also justify the higher price of latest generation iPhones. So from the solution to the problem, we should go back to how the problem appears. It's not just finding a commercial solution. We should rather focus on, on the digital surround. That's why we hand over to Professor Montani. What I would like to underline in my short presentation is a concept and also an opportunity. We have been talking about UV protection earlier. There's still much we need to do when uh, dealing uh, with the use of digital devices. Uh, so we have uh, here a risk, but also an opportunity. Sometimes we look for numbers, uh, but there's really little you can measure with numbers. Uh, and then there's a gray zone on the contrary where we should really consider the systems that are provided by 
suppliers. We can talk about uh, the symptoms of the lead generation or digital generation, uh, the generation of individuals who use for many hours every day more than one digital device. Our vision, therefore, has to adjust to completely different rules of the game. And there's a feedback we get from that. Uh, we have uh, symptoms that uh, we can here explore. Symptoms that are sometimes also present in astinopia, uh, which is really not caused by use of digital devices. And here we should also differentiate the way we perform our checks and controls to detect the root problem. You all know the symptoms. They don't require any comment, but let's look at when they occur after digital devices have been used for several hours, so typically in the evening. Let's look at these interesting values. Out of all these percentages, I would like to draw your attention to 73%, i.e. users younger than 30 with the greatest number of symptoms. So this is a typically a condition which is common among younger users. Far-sighted individuals seem to have these symptoms less often than their younger colleagues. That's why we need to work a lot on specific solutions for this age bracket. And uh, then something else which is fully in line with the comments of Professor Scaringi, awareness of risks. Well, there's little communication, little is known about the problems that are in front of us. We were talking about UV light. We know that UV light can be harmful. Well, the use of digital uh, devices it can be associated with problems. I remember the old cathode tube, old TV sets. In the old ages, technology has really progressed a lot since that. But people still don't know that there are specific solutions to that. Another discouraging figure here, 8% of users of specific devices for those problems. If you might wear normal shoes to go running, that's the logic. Once more we think, we should think that we need the right equipment. We, I have given you the example of shoes or garments, but you know, this is not commonly accepted when it comes to tools and devices that allow you to see better. Here we have some figures. Look at UNFAO figures, a comparative pie chart 2016 and 17 percentages are similar. Look at specific products and their share. Specific products, uh, for instance, progressive lenses, occupational lenses, 2.4 percent. How many far-sighted uh, use digital devices or laptops? This is... Uh, uh, does this reflect the actual contribution that we can have from our corrective systems? I think so. There's a huge potential here. We can tell it from the pie charts. Let's now extrapolate from this evidence and from market figures where the percentages might be smaller. For instance, uh, uh, lenses for younger wearers. What's their role compared with monofocal lenses? We need to pay more attention to target specific products. UV filter 
filters, as we have uh, heard previously, well, we would expect uh, uh, higher values here. Uh, you know, this pie chart is really not reassuring. We just have 12% of these products with a blue filter, which means that there's still a lot we need to do. There are several problems that we should deal with. First of all, we have this classification dating back to 2003. This is a very interesting book of Shidi, who has defined the causes of digital problems. We have environmental problems, eye problems, or a combination of them. Environmental problems, lighting, setup of monitors, or monitor type as described by Professor Martino before me. And when we talk about position, then there are also rules you should follow depending on the type of correction you want to have. Depending on the type of lens, you have to adjust the position of the monitor because improper use of the correction system uh, in connection with the position of the monitor can cause uh, the classical symptoms uh, that these individuals complain about. And then the 3 to one rule, which has already been uh, mentioned uh, by Nicola. And let's now focus uh, on visual problems, eye problems. Uh, we have refractive accommodation, binocular vision, internal problems or external ones. Uh, uh, the lacrimal layer the, and uh, here you see the other items in the list. Uh, one uh, of the positive effects that uh, comes from adequate correction. So prescription therefore is a very important step because also small amitropia values, anisometropia or astigmatism can cause astenopic symptoms, then we have the accommodative response. Supporting accommodation also in younger individuals has proven to be effective. So, for instance, the distance from digital devices can be very important and it needs to be considered because if you read a short text message, then you tend to keep the device closer to you where if we search for something, uh, uh, if we Google for something, we will keep the device at a longer distance. So we have to accommodate as a consequence of that. We need to be aware of that and perform tests that are compatible with the causes of these symptoms. We shouldn't take for granted that 40 centimeters is a standard distance. There might be varying distances. We shouldn't follow, fall into this trap. Then there is also an issue that is uh, associated with accommodation stress. Uh, the accommodative response is not always consistent with the stimulus. Uh, this difference is physiological up to a certain extent, but as uh, stenopic symptoms develop, uh, this is exacerbated. You can use an accommodative support for that. Uh, you can prescribe an addition also in individuals who shouldn't need it based on their age. Uh, here you see fewer papers on binocular vision because uh, uh, follow-up uh, monitoring times uh, were quite short and uh, this uh, therefore has not allowed uh, to measure any interference. Uh, this is uh, the result of a paper uh, published by Rosenfield, one of the greatest experts uh, in the field of digital impact. Uh, here you see mild exophoria from short distances can help counteract fatigue. So there are specific solutions to accommodation. You can use additions for individuals who would be 
still too young um, to be classified as far-sighted external causes. Um, we are not talking about eye dryness here, but we, it has been seen that in children there is more frequently eye dryness associated with the use of smartphones. And therefore you will understand that in the future we might expect an evolution of these conditions accompanying frequent use of digital devices and then instability of the tier layer in, in digital users coupled with eye fatigue. If you have a surface which is not ideally performing, you'll have micro fluctuations of accommodation. So that's why it is so important to intervene also here. This is a Japanese paper you see tear film instability, ocular surface damage, and uh, the and we have this eye fatigue since symptoms associated with that. Here you see stability, so blinking uh, in digital users tend to be reduced in terms of number of blinks. Uh, we have uh, some terms of reference. Uh, we have the so-called ocular protective index, uh, the ratio between the stability of the tear film and the frequency of blinking. We have a reduction in the number of blinks by almost 70 percent. So we need to review this uh, formula. A proposal has been submitted on reviewing the OPI as a consequence of the potential uh, longer uh, distance between one blinking and the next one. So we should keep in mind uh, that we have another opportunity. We have uh, replacement products for tear film. Ophthalmological lenses will provide help, but also tear film uh, surrogate products uh, it enhances the stability of uh, all the lacrimal filter and also blue filters have got a positive impact on better vision quality. Much has been said about blue light. We have heard from Professor Martina. Uh, it's very important to consider how to use and prescribe blue filters in light of the benefits uh, that arise from filtering off blue light, most of all uh, in terms of quality of vision. Then uh, there is another area to be explored, uh, the effects of blue light on progression of retinal conditions, because it has been demonstrated uh, that, the smart, that smartphones and digital uh, devices release blue light but actually the level of this blue light does not pose a danger or is not harming public health. So we should filter blue light, but we should also filter it to improve quality of vision because enhancing the quality of vision in these individuals also means reducing the inputs that can cause asthenopic symptoms. So. We have to reconsider everything and consider specific products to help handle these problems. Thanks a lot, Giancarlo. And uh, you are what you eat, but uh, you are also uh, what you see. By paraphrasing last minutes uh, to questions, uh, devoted to questions uh, uh, for our friends from the industry. Giancarlo spoke about 12% uh, uh, penetration of uh, uh, blue treatments in the world of lenses. Uh, I thought about the two sage agents uh, that went to Africa and uh, uh, one said uh, uh, 
I have to go back because nobody wears shoes. And instead, one says, I stay here because I will sell shoes to everybody. So, uh, uh, what do you think? Is it much? Is it little? Let's say that if we think about uh, occupational lenses, uh, such products uh, have been on the market for at least uh, 15 years and 2017 closed uh, with uh, uh, a figure of 2.4% and specific treatments for blue light, 13% is positive for sure. Uh, but what should be considered is that we shouldn't uh, give this treatment uh, to all consumers in an uncontrolled fashion. If our specific uh, requirements, uh, uh, vision of digital devices, uh, surface uh, treatment uh, is enough to reflect uh, that dangerous uh, blue light, but an anti-reflective uh, treatment can do nothing against the uh, sun's uh, blue light for all of those uh, that work outdoors. Uh, we go back to what we said before, where customization of the end product uh, is at the basis of uh, uh, the uh, differentiation of the point of sale itself. Analysis will be fundamental to identify uh, products in line uh, with the different uh, visual requirements. Silvano, your opinion. Before giving an answer, I'd like to make a remark. Uh, and uh, I'd like to tell you that, uh, uh, for me, you are also young. But if I consider the average age uh, of the audience here, with regard to the previous audience, uh, the age is higher. And this reflects uh, what is happening around main uses of digital devices, uh, those uh, that should uh, be protected the most, uh, are less interested uh, uh, about uh, what the device uh, can cause uh, to the eyes. I don't know if it's uh, uh, a question on, of not being interested, uh, or uh, perhaps uh, they were simply hungry and went away. Going back to what Fabio said before, much has been done. Uh, but. Uh, more has to be done, uh, and uh, we as companies invest in research uh, to create uh, more and more uh, sophisticated products, uh, uh, but also for specific activities and ophthalmologists and optometrists uh, based uh, uh, on the client uh, should propose uh, the right type of product. Thank you so much. Uh, questions are from the audience for our speakers, representatives of the industry. Uh, sir, here on my right, there's a traveling mic. If you can please stand up and say your name. Yes, Danilo Mandelli. I'd like uh, to make a reflection uh, on the uh, last uh, aspect mentioned, uh, uh, differentiation between protection uh, against the blue light uh, that doesn't seem to be so important uh, and uh, improvement instead of uh, visual quality. This distinction is very important, especially if you sell uh, lenses, uh, eyeglasses. Uh, and uh, in one case, it's a protection device. Uh, being covered by a certain directive in the case of uh, improvement in visual quality. Instead, uh, it's a medical device. And I'd like to know from the two representatives of the industry how uh, they deal with this type of product at a commercial level. Uh, eyeglasses or lenses uh, sold uh, to protect against the blue light, do you sell it uh, uh, as a medical device or uh, as a protective device? Uh, I believe that boundaries uh, should be defined by regulations. Uh, 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 companies uh, uh, cannot define boundaries. Uh, companies have to comply with regulations in force. Uh, for sure, going back to the previous roundtable, 
we are aware uh, of the problems. And the World Health Organization uh, defined the nine uh, diseases that are due to excessive exposure to UV light. And uh, conversely, whatever has to do with blue light is being studied. So today, there's no study paper that has proven in the case of human beings that blue light is dangerous for the retina. So a treatment that reflects a part of the blue light cannot be considered as protective, but an anti-reflective treatment that reflects a part of the blue light for us companies is a treatment that is proposed in terms of a higher offer, but at the end of a standard treatment, nothing more. Silvano. I do confirm the approach taken by most companies is to provide a treatment that improves visual performance and not preventive. When I speak about prevention and protection, I should also have regulations defining the level, protecting what and to what extent we should have a reference point to then uh, define the level of protection. Thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, just a suggestion from Professor Martino before closing on a theme uh, 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 that uh, perhaps uh, we're not fully aware of. Uh, I would have expected uh, from you a question. Uh, which other sources of blue light do you have in daily life apart from displays? I talked about uh, displays because uh, perhaps uh, uh, it's the most uh, obvious example, but in your homes, uh, what's uh, lighting like? How is lighting changing in your homes? Yesterday, the day before yesterday, I bought a LED lamp. Uh, it's an extremely white light. Uh, when I, when you buy a lamp, uh, do you see if it's a uh, uh, cold uh, light, uh, warm light? Uh, it's always LED light. So in the future, I. Uh, expect uh, that uh, display uh, won't uh, issue so much blue light, but lighting in homes is changing. Have you realized it? Have you changed lighting in homes, uh, uh, let alone other sources of blue light in everyday life? Thank you so much. That's the task of the optometrist, uh, uh, asking questions and giving answers. Uh, thank you so much.